Hey guys, so it is completely, not completely, it's very dark in here and I have um, a computer, not my computer, which is important to note because <sighs> issues. But anyway, I've got a candle going and some incense, but for the sake of this video, I suppose I'll turn on the light. So, I have a lot that I want to say and communicate to you. First of all, about my computer, it crashed a while ago and uh, haven't been able to get it work. It was at a repair shop for almost three weeks. Then it went up to Apple and now it's gotten sent out and it's hopefully getting actually repaired. So I haven't had my computer for over a month, which is very strange. It's been difficult, but I've managed. So next thing, I have been creating a lot of scripts to make informative videos. And I think I got into this space where I felt like I had to make only videos that specifically added value to your life in a very um, clear, direct way. So I was making videos with like, okay, here are the five tips type of thing, or developing the scripts, not filming anything really. But then I, I just read something and I realized that that's, that was a problem for me because it, was, it was, wasn't allowing me to actually just sit and talk and document where I'm at and my journey at all. And then another thing in relation to that, I saw that about 90% of the people who view my content are not subscribed. So that means it was just over 90%, I think it was close to 92. That means that most people who are seeing my videos are seeing them either for the very first time or they're not subscribed. So I would say um, are not necessarily interested in every type of video that I put out there. So yeah, I'm back and I'll be making these kind of videos again, I hope. Um, and I'm going to be planting some seeds again, hopefully more successful than than last year. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about food independence and why I think it's it's so important. Um, highly suggest a video I'll link below by uh, Zach Bush. It was an interview on Rich Roll's podcast with Zach Bush, and it was awesome. And he has a ton of other cool things, and he's doing awesome um, regenerative agriculture stuff, and he was talking about um, food independence and the importance of it. So anyway, I got this book after I kind of failed to grow the seeds that I started successfully inside after I failed to have them grow outside. So I got this book and I'll be planting some seeds which I hope will work this year. Uh, I'm working on my um, my six week nature connection course. It's going super well so far. I have the whole outline. I'm starting to write scripts for the audio or video. I haven't decided. Um, and then I'll be launching that in the future. And I have two books that I want to talk about. Um, or is it more than two? Anyway, I, I read one book a little while ago, um, a couple weeks ago, called Burning Woman by Lucy H. Pierce. It was suggested to me by... Uh, a friend of mine who used to be my force therapy mentor um, when I was in practicum before I was officially certified. Anyway, awesome book just about um, women's history and uh, how we've been suppressed, the different ways we've been suppressed, and uh, yeah, about darkness and fire and um, a lot of interesting things. I think you would definitely get um, anyone would get something from it. I really, really feel that way. But anyway, 
I was most interested in the darkness piece of it, which I'll be talking about in the next uh, the next book too. But four pages of notes that are from the book. Wow, why am I out of focus? Ah, I keep going in and out of focus. Sorry, guys. It's the lighting, isn't it? Um, a quote from this book that I want to read that isn't from the book, but is from another book that is in the book. I think you get what I mean. There's an underlying longing for darkness. It's as important as sleep. It feels natural for us as human, as humans born from wombs to search for a home or understanding that is based on feeling and connection rather than sight. This has prompted a lot of curiosity within me and it's right along the same lines of what I've been trying to, uh, what I've been working on for the last year, kind of a side project, but has now become much more of a main project, which ha relates to star bathing and um, creating a movement where people are intentionally connecting to nature and themselves and each other in the dark. Similar to forest bathing, but very different in um, its intentions and um, what the mission is, as well as just in general, the uh, the structure of it will not be will not be similar. So the other book is called Waking Up in the Dark, or is it Waking Up to the Dark? Anyway, Clark Strand lives like 45 minutes from me. I'm going to planning to reach out to him, but um, amazing book. I think in terms of addressing the darkness that I the references to darkness and the importance of not using artificial light there was much more in this book this was like the exact book I've been looking for um, so if you're interested in that I will make sure to label um, put both both books below uh, just a couple things that I want to read there's a lot Anyway, I'll just choose maybe two or three. These are all actual quotes from the book. Who could have known it was the worst thing that could happen to the planet? We don't know the value of darkness until we have destroyed it. We don't know what a soul is worth until it's gone. And so another question that's come up, and I have forgotten if I filmed a video that addresses this, or if I even, I think I did film one, but I don't think I ended up publishing it. The question of how much time do you spend in darkness awake with no artificial light on, no TV, no phone, no computer. Um, and I think you'll find that most people, from the little survey I did, most people spend around none to an hour. Um, and likely when people are saying that they spend an hour, they're probably counting, you know, that time just before you're falling asleep and I don't know if I'm I really mean that either um, anyway things to think about right prolactin creates a feeling of security quietness and peace so before this quote um, it describes that prolactin is a um, attachment hormone that is normally associated with um, mothers and infants and it is intimately and biologically tied to the dark enter the darkness and stay there without checking your cell phone or turning on the lights and the darkness like a mother will take you in her embrace and then uh, the history of our planet is nothing but a history of the dead but it isn't a dead history because the dead are still there in the dark they are only waiting to be acknowledged their voices speak in the language of dreams and through the owls or fireflies. They speak through the weather and stir briefly, like a breeze at the window, in the spaces that open between thoughts in the middle of the night. Anyway. Um, there are certainly things that are much more out there about that book, but the majority of it is very approachable to anyone. So... That's that. Still doing astrology. I have 
uh, two more like levels. So my next level will start next Tuesday and will end by the end of May. And then I will just have from September to December and then I'll be done and I'll officially have a certificate of uh, soul level astrology. I wish I put my hair up because this is annoying me. Much better. So I will be graduating um, with that certificate in December. When I signed up for the first level, I had no idea that this was a three year certification process. Um, it's given me so much though, and I'm really grateful I signed up. Um, it's just been really cool. And to be able to offer that to other people as well as weave it into uh, this star bathing, my forest therapy stuff, um, just to have a knowledge of the stars in that way and of the journey of our, our journey, um, the journey of our souls, of, of us, why we're here, what we're doing, what's our purpose. It's just really cool and yeah, I'm grateful for it. The last thing I do want to say is that I'm still taking care of my grandfather and it's gone through many different phases. First, it was a f almost a full year of being sleeping up at his house and taking care of him overnight and then um, you know, getting him breakfast and he would come down to my parents' house for dinner and someone would go up and give him lunch. Sometimes it was me, sometimes it was another family member, but I was always the one there overnight. Um, so that was a whole journey. And then he moved into my parents' house and now it's been a really, you know, serious 24 hour, um, care that he needs he needs overnight and uh, we hired someone to help and that didn't work out so um, yeah right now it's pretty much me overnight most nights uh, I think there's been maybe two nights since I got back from Bali that I didn't do you know I've documented so much of it and I have so many things I want to say and uh, just like my personal journey I want to share um, but it's felt hard because I don't feel like my family really wants me to share that and as someone who um, recognizes that that part of my journey is to share everything whether I'm comfortable with sharing it or not, that's part of why I'm here. I have a very, um, it's very clear to me that my life will always be to some degree out there and I'll always be very open in spaces that I feel safe. And uh, it's funny to say, but I feel really safe sharing my life online on the internet and it's not that people don't say you know negative things but I think people genu genuinely get an idea of who I am and realize that I'm someone who cares a lot and I think that genuinely comes across in my delivery of things so um, yeah, I, I guess I'm looking forward to, you know, when this journey of caretaking transforms into some other form, um, or when, you know, my grandfather does pass because it's, it feels a little bit like torture taking videos and documenting things and not being able to share it. Because you know what, this is all about learning. 
and to think that you know this what I'm going through is only me and it only relates to my grandfather and his process and then that reflects on you know my mom because it's her dad and it's just like this has nothing to do with that this has to do with documenting my journey because I feel like it's a special one as well as honoring his process no matter what it is it's not easy to age it's very hard to gracefully age and uh, loneliness is a real thing feeling like a burden I can remember very early on that was just we had a couple conversations up at his house about it but besides that he's far past that point of of knowing um, or worrying about being a burden to everyone in the family so yeah I just I'm hoping I'm hopeful that I'll be able to share more soon um, you know before my life is completely different but if not it will be shared at some point um, yeah that's where I'm at with that it's there's a lot to say there but I'm gonna leave it at that so I was going to address the vegan thing here but I don't think I have time because this is just too long I hope you guys are having an awesome day I will talk to you soon I appreciate anyone who actually stayed here long enough to uh, hear the close and I will talk to you super soon in another video bye life is wonderful life is wonderful Love